Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for Microsoft Excel. This screencast covers Section 10 T and Z tests for unmatched data and includes Section 10.1 2 sample Z test, Section 10.2 2 sample students T test and Section 10.3 2 sample unequal variance T test. These tests are for when you want to assess if two samples are likely to come from the same statistical population or not. We often take samples from different situations and then when we compare the data from each sample find it to vary. The question always is whether these differences are due to random variation or whether the unique qualities of each sample situation has created this difference. Take the data from table 10.4. Here we have measured the height of periwinkle shoals from the lower and mid shore and we find there is variation between these data sets. The question is does the position of the periwinkle on the shore dictate to some extent how high a periwinkle shell will grow or is the variation seen just due to non-perfect sampling and if we could measure all the periwinkles on the shore would we see no difference in the data sets? The null hypothesis would state that there is no difference between the mean shell height in millimetres of the periwinkles from the lower and mid shore. The size of each sample is 13 individuals and so we would use a t-test. Table 10.3 in the book, however, contains an enlarged data set of 30 individuals per sample and it is common practice to use a z-test on data sets of 30 or more. However, when the sample size is more than 30, then the t and z-test give very similar outcomes and both can be used. And for this reason, most computer programs do not implement two sample z-tests as a simple menu selection. Thus, this screencast will only cover t-tests and you should use the test for the larger sample sizes too. One further consideration we have to make is if the variances of the samples are similar or homogeneous, also termed homoscedastic, as there are different tests for when the variances are homogeneous compared when they are not. See Chapter 10 and Box 10.1 for more details. Fortunately, the computer program will also do this analysis for us too. So let's run the test. I have entered the shell heights from Table 10.4 into two columns. Column A has the heights from the lower shore and Column B from the mid shore. The first thing we have to do is to test the variances to see if they're homogeneous or not. You do that by tracking up to data and click, track along to the data analysis button and click and then down to the F-test two sample variances. Select and press OK. Now we have to tell Excel our two variable ranges. For the first sample I click the little button with the red arrow to the right of the variable one range box and a selection window appears. I now select all of column A including the header. I go back up and press the button with the little red arrow again and my range is placed in the variable 1 range box. I'm going to do the same for variable range 2. I'm going to click the button with the little red arrow, select all the data including the label from column 2, back up and press the little button to put my range into the variable 2 range. Because I have included the labels, I also need to tick the labels box. Alpha I'm going to leave at 0.05. My output I want to have on this sheet, so I'm going to click the output range radio button and select the cell where I want the top left hand corner of the data to appear. I click OK and here are the results. Excel has given me a p-value for a one-tailed test. What I want is a p-value for a two-tailed test. It is simple to derive the p-value for the two-tailed test by multiplying the p-value for the one-tailed test by two. I'm going to do it as follows. I'm going to select the cell next to the one-tailed test, press equals to tell Excel that I'm intending to add a mathematical expression to that cell, press 2 and the multiply sign and then select the p-value for the one-tailed test. I then track to the tick box and click to confirm. Excel has now told me the p-value for the two-tailed test is about 0.0779. So what is the meaning of the p-value? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. So, a p-value of 0.0779 is above our transition value of 0.05, which means the result is not significant and that we cannot reject the null hypothesis that states there is no difference between the variance of periwinkle shoals from the lower and mid shores. It tells us that we need to do a t-test for data with equal variances and this is how we do it. We track up to data analysis again and select and if we scroll down in the test selection window 
we can see at the end it has both t-test 2 samples assuming equal variances and t-test 2 sample assuming unequal variances. We want the equal variance option and I press OK and another window opens. Again I need to add my range. I'm going to add column A including the label and select. I'm going to add column 2 including the label and select. I'm going to tick the label box to tell Excel that my data has labels. Again, I'm going to get the output range on this page and I'm going to select to put it under the t-test label and select. And I shall press OK. We can see that it's given us a total p-value of 0 0.397 which is well above our 0 0.05 transition value indicating a non-significant result and that we cannot reject the null hypothesis and that there is no difference between the height of periwinkle shells from the lower and mid shores of Porth Call in 2002. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test or the theory behind it then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.